Hi, this is Michael Crump with Telerik. Today we're going to take a look at creating animations with Telerik UI for iOS. Before we get started, let's look at the two animation types that can be used. Custom animations allow you to use a majority of the core animation framework to customize the visual points, whereas UI Kit Dynamic Animation uses the physics engine integrated into iOS 7 to animate the points in a series. Let's take a look now at using UIKit Dynamics with Telerik UI for iOS. So here we are, we are inside of Xcode, and what I have done is I've went ahead and created a project that we can begin adding animations to. So underneath the linked framework and libraries, I've went ahead and added Telerik UI.framework, and if you need some instructions on how to do that, there is a getting started video that you can watch in this series. I've also went ahead and I've went to the viewcontroller.h and I've added in an import statement to Telerik UI forward slash Telerik UI.h. I've also went ahead and inside of the main dot storyboard where you see the view controller, we have the view, and then you see a chart. I have went ahead and added in a view located here onto the screen and I've given this a class of type TK chart. I also went ahead and added constraints which you can find down at the bottom here to match the different types of devices whether the user may be using a 3.5 inch iPhone or a 4 inch iPhone and you can see those constraints listed out there as well. From there I have went ahead and I have added in the referencing outlets for chart view of view controller and you can see that if we go to our view controller dot H you can see that I've just simply given this the name of chart view. So from here let's go ahead and go inside of our main controller dot M and you'll see that under the implementation I have added two types here one called UI dynamic animator which is the name of animator that is going to be used for our animations and then I've added an NS mutable array and just given this the name of points we're going to go ahead and we're going to begin with the view did load so underneath the view did load I'm going to paste in a code snippet that's going to initialize our points and then it's going to add 10 different data points that we can use for this series. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add in our TK chart line series. So I'll go ahead and I will drop that in. So you can see I'm going to simply call TK chart line series. I'm going to give it a name of line series and it will be initialized here. So from here we're going to toggle a couple of different properties. So we have a selection mode and I've just set this to TK chart series selection mode data point. I've actually added in a point shape and a shape mode to always show. I've added the series with the items coming from points which is going to be the 10 points that we declared earlier. The y-axis.style.labelStyle.textHidden, I've turned that to yes. And I've also turned on the animations. So that's just simply an underscore chart view dot allow animations equals yes. Finally, I've added in underscore chart view dot reload data. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at adding in the animations. I'm going to begin by dropping in a code snippet. And in this code snippet you can see that I'm calling the animator that we defined earlier here, UI Dynamic Animator. And then we have UI Dynamic Animator Alec and then in it with reference view underscore chart view dot plot view. Once that's in place we're going to need to set up an array for our points. 
So we're going to use chart view visual points for series underscore chart view dot series and give it zero. Next up is UI collision behavior. This is responsible for any type of collisions that may occur. In this instance, we're going to have points that's going to be shown on the screen. And after those points are shown, they're going to drop down to the actual bottom of the screen. So you can see here that I am in it with item points. And all that I really have to do to turn that on is to turn on collision dot translate reference bounds into boundary equals yes. Next up, we have the UI gravity behavior, and this simply specifies the gravity vector that applies to all of the dynamic items. And as you can see, we're also going to be calling in it with items points. And from here, I'm just going to go ahead and set the gravity direction of CG vector make and then a 0.f comma 2.f. Finally, we have a UI dynamic item behavior, and this represents a base dynamic animation configuration for the different types of dynamic items. Again, we're using in it with items, and we're just passing in the points. We're also setting the dynamic dot elasticity to 0.5f. Finally, we need to add these behaviors to the animator that we declared earlier. So here we've added all three of those. So now that that's in place, let's go ahead and let's add in our timer. I'm just going to do this right before the points. So from here you can see I'm just adding an NS timer, scheduled timer with interval 5, setting the target to self, and we're setting a selector to the action, which we're going to create that method in just a second. User info is set to nil, and then we're not going to repeat it. So let's go ahead now and set up the action, and I will just drop that method underneath the screen and control F. And so from here, you can see the action is just going to be self dot apply gravity effects effect after timer, which we've already declared here. Okay, and from here, let's go ahead and let's run this application. I'm going to hit the run button and let's look at our simulator. You can see the animations. And now you should see the UI dynamic animations as they dropped. Okay, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more videos coming up on Telerik UI for iOS.